What does noodling on guitar even mean? You know, we've all met this person at a party before. I told him Doritos belong in burritos. Have you seen the new Avatar? Reminds me of the time I was swimming with dolphins. I wonder if my dog can read my mind. So what's the opposite of noodling? Well, playing in a way that's coherent, connected, meaningful, and therefore memorable. I took a section of a backing track that's kind of easy to sound like noodling to make it challenging. So see if you can figure out the main thing I did to combat that cliche noodling sound. <laughs> Now, if you're not sure yet, I want you to pause the video now and think about it. Great, you paused and thought about it. You see, this right here is what I was using to prevent myself from wandering too much. Oh wait, not this, but this. For about eight years before I even picked up a guitar, I played bass, but when I started to switch to guitar as my main instrument, what I struggled with the most was that my solos lacked direction. And I used to practice so hard working on technique ear training, scales, transcribing looks, really just trying to do it all. And I got to the point where I started to think that I just didn't have it in me. And if I couldn't figure it out, I might as well just go back to only playing bass and just supporting others while they got to express themselves while soloing. Thinking of my soul as like a frame is what changed everything. But before we get to the best use of this concept, one simple way you can think of using a frame is putting a limitation on what you're playing. So the example we're using is in B flat and one way to put a frame around what you're playing is to put a limit on what notes you can play. So let's say we're only gonna play the B flat major pentatonic, but that's still a lot of notes. So we're gonna make our frame even smaller and say we're only gonna play in this area, which is still way more than we need, but it makes things a lot easier and allows us to focus on more important things. Because a lot of times what leads to noodling is simply having too many options. And if I just focused on all the different notes I can play, even limiting myself to only the major pentatonic in that area, I still might sound as if I'm noodling like this. The next thing I do to avoid that is think about how I want to start the solo. And I want to do that with a simple phrase that's really memorable because if you can't remember what you just played, how can you expect anyone else to? Also, you won't know where to go next. So I just came up with something really simple that I heard in my head like this. Then I repeated it. Then I started to get away from it and even started to sound a little bit like I was noodling. But what kept the whole solo from being that way is the frame. Because you see, I think of the whole solo as having a frame around it where there's a clear beginning and ending. It's like a movie that has a setup in the intro and a payoff at the end. And for that, all I do is take the original simple melody and repeat it an octave higher, and I kind of toyed around with how I did it so it's not exactly the same. Even if you do meander in the middle a little bit, that's all right because people usually remember the beginning and ending the most anyway. But using a frame to have a clear beginning and ending to your solos is not the only thing you wanna do. That's why you should click on this video here because in it I go over a simple approach that's improved my playing just as much as the concept of framing a solo, if not even more. 